I will never forget the way that our mother screamed. She was flapping her legs and her arms, saying, no, 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 over and over and over again. Those emotional words from one of Terry Spencer's sisters moments before the man convicted of killing him was sentenced. Now, Spencer was 32 when Hunter found a dead, found dead back in 2019. Now, Joe Kadat tells us the man convicted of killing him has been sentenced to more than five decades in prison. Rebecca, it was an emotional day in Palmer Court for Spencer's family and friends as the man convicted of killing the 32-year-old maintained his innocence. As he was sentenced to 56 years, he said he was a better man because of the man he's convicted of and sentenced for killing. Emotional testimony from Spencer's family in court before the sentencing. Spencer, who was 32 at the time he was murdered, was found by a hunter on an all-terrain vehicle trail in Wasilla with a gunshot wound to his head. Troopers traced clues back to Cooper Gordon two days later and found Gordon with Spencer's belongings and his Jeep. After the sentencing, Spencer's family says they feel relief and want their loved one to be remembered for who he was and not by what happened to him. My family can hopefully find some peace now. It's been four years since my brother was taken from us. We've suffered a lot of loss in that amount of time, and basically our lives have been on hold. So hopefully this will be the start of our family coming back together and just healing and remembering Terry for the fun person he was and not the day he was killed. The judge cited what he called a long, escalated, violent criminal history when handing down the 56-year sentence the judge says he wants the long sentence to serve as a deterrent and a community condemnation. The judge says he what wants the long him? sentence to serve as a deterrent and a community condemnation. When have you ever heard that? When have you ever heard language like this in a in a in a blackistani liberal city? Listen to what this judge said. Listen to the language this judge used, man. It's very important, man. The language this judge used, man. Cited what he called a long, escalated, violent criminal history when handing down the 56-year sentence. The judge says he wants the long sentence to serve as a deterrent and a community condemnation. For so the, the, the sentence, the sentencing this guy will... You, you, Will, will serve as a deterrent. Sentencing this guy will serve as a deterrent. Giving him a fucking shitload of time will serve as a deterrent. I don't think so, man. I, I mean, I think that works with you gliders. I think that works with gliders. Glide, other gliders hear that shit like, oh, shit. Sons, man, everything happens in that moment. So I think I think long sentences work with sons to a degree, though. I think it works with sons to a degree, with the the guys on the fringe. But those guys, the, the sons like this guy, with you know a career criminal escalating crimes, I don't think you can deter them with harsh sentences, man, because everything happens in the moment. What do you guys think, man? Everything happens in that moment. There's, it doesn't matter about uh, what what the you know what kind of sentences they're handing out in that jurisdiction, because everything happens in that moment. That argument you're told to leave somewhere. Yada yada yada. The judge cited what he called a long, escalated, violent criminal history when handing down the 56-year sentence. The judge says he wants the long sentence to serve as a deterrent and a community condemnation. It will not prosecute a former Anchorage police officer charged in December with operating an unmarked police patrol car under the influence while off duty on J-Bear. Laura Maxwell was in the courtroom this morning as the 24-year-old former officer was due to be arraigned. Well, that former officer, Ethan Copeland, did show up for his arraignment, but he didn't have to stay very long before finding out that the state would not prosecute. Copeland was charged in early December for driving an unmarked patrol car on base while intoxicated, as well as a charge of drunk in possession of a firearm. Now, as you mentioned, he was off duty at the time. Today in the courtroom, 
Copeland watched as Assistant Attorney General Ron Dupuy told the judge the state was declining to prosecute the case. State's declining the, the charge, is that right? That's correct, Judge. Okay. Okay. All right, so the case is declined. Do you know if there's any intention to if there's any investigating or if you think it's declined? Judge, I think that oh, they racist, man. If it was a black cop, man, they would have fucking charged him, man. They racist up there, man. Racism, y'all, in Alaska, man. Racism in Alaska, man. Racism in Alaska, y'all. Look, man, they ain't charging this cop, man. They declining. The, when you ever seen that, man? They don't ever do that with black cops, man. I'm organizing a march tomorrow, straight up to Alaska, man. We gonna walk, y'all. Everybody meet me. Everybody meet me in, in Seattle tomorrow, man. We gonna organize a march. We gonna walk to Alaska to march on Alaska to fight racism, man. Glacial racial. <laughs> We gonna call it the glacial racial march, man. Ron Dupuy told the judge the state was declining to prosecute the case. State's declining the, the charge, is that right? That's correct, Judge. Okay, okay. All right, so the case is declined. Do you know if there's any intention to if there's investigating or if you think it's declined? Judge, I think that will conclude the uh, criminal investigation. Okay. And Assistant Attorney General Ron Dupuy, he's with the Office of Special Prosecutions that investigates cases when law enforcement is involved. He told me they looked at all the evidence but decided there was not enough to prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. And Copeland did not want to comment today. A developing story this evening, Anchorage police say a Baxter Elementary School staff member was arrested for assaulting a student. APD says 31-year-old Jawan A. Harris confronted the Who? student. <laughs> Hold on. What the fuck? Who? On your 31 year old Jawan A. Harris confronted. It's white people named Jawan in Alaska, man. <laughs> Who knew? Press one if you knew there was white people named Jawan in Alaska, man. <laughs> I didn't know that, man. I didn't know you had white people named Jawan in Alaska, man. This is all news to me, man. This is news to me, man. Shit. Cultural appropriation. Appropriating our culture. Everyone hit the like button. Every damn one of you is. Every damn one of you is hit the like button. And be grateful that... Doug Chunks bought y'all some goddamn channel memberships so you can see all the members only content, man. I put a video on members only the other day, man. A, a, a fresh video, man. Fifty of y'all get a have some goddamn respect, man. Support the channel. Hit the like button. Hit the PayPal, hit the cash app, hit the super chat. They got white folks named Jawan. Culturally appropriating our names up in Alaska, man. Ain't this a bitch? A developing story this evening. Anchorage police say a Baxter Elementary School staff member was arrested for assaulting a student. APD says 31-year-old Jawan A. Harris confronted the student on a playground yesterday after they had a disagreement and assaulted them. But the student was not hurt, according to police. ASD says Harris is a paraprofessional. It's typically a job that acts as a teacher assistant. The police say Harris is accused of putting his hands on the student, who was then in pain and fearful. APD says the student was not injured. Harris was arrested at his home. This is a developing story. We'll continue to up. Wow, homie, homie beat up a, a student, man, in Alaska, man. Wow. 
Juwan A. Harris, man. That damn glider caused some trouble in Alaska, man. Don't go to Alaska, y'all. It's dangerous. The debate over how to help the homeless is a key issue in the race to be the mayor of Anchorage. It is one year since Catholic Social Services Navigation Center, designed to help people experiencing homelessness, opened in downtown Anchorage. Lauren Maxwell looks at what's been accomplished. When Catholic Social Services opened the Navigation Center a year ago in the former Beans Cafe, they called it a first in the state where people could receive services in a permanent place. Look, man, they got their first. <laughs> Y'all finally got what sons been getting for fucking hundreds of years, man. Y'all finally getting that, man. Y'all finally got, maybe it's because sons is coming up there. See, this is the good thing, man. Jawan and all these other sons starting to come to Alaska, man. And y'all going to get some services now, man. Y'all going to get some programs, man. See, it's not all bad with sons. Son, people ain't all bad, man. We When we come to a place, we don't just bring crime, man. We bring services, man. We bring programs. In downtown Anchorage, Lauren Maxwell looks at what's been accomplished. When Catholic Social Services opened the Navigation Center a year ago in the former Beans Cafe, they called it a first in the state where people could receive services in a permanent place under one roof. By mid-morning, the NAV Center is starting to fill up, but this is not a place to simply hang out. I'll let you know when it's your turn. We have a couple people ahead of you. It's a place to get things done. We really want to be, um, you know, that, that first stop for people um, when they're trying to figure out what they might need um, to move towards permanent stability. Since it opened one year ago, the center's director says they provided services to more than 3,000 people including help with housing and employment. Yeah, man, look at, look at bro, bro. <laughs> look at bro, bro, man. I'm telling you, man, we make things better, man. We make things better. Press one, man. We make things better. Press one. We make things better. Press one. There we go. Yeah, yeah, man. We make things better, man. <laughs> look at look at bro, bro, man, with the wave cap and his pants sagging, man, and the hoodie on, man. We we in the building. It's <laughs> the mothership been landed. I done told y'all that, man. I done showed y'all that. Now y'all got services. See, look. Y'all y'all white people get to take advantage of that services, man. All these services, man. You need this when you got sons, man. <laughs> you ain't got these services when you got sons, man. This will be trouble, man. It's going to be trouble, man. So, yeah, man. That's right, man. Shout out to and look at this glider. Listen to what this glider says, man. This good old glider, man. We really want to be, um, you know, that that first stop for people um, when they're trying to figure out what they might need um, to move towards permanent stability. Since it opened one year ago, the center's director says they provided services to more than three thousand people, including help with housing and employment. But they also offer the basics to people who don't have a permanent home. Showers, being able to eat, you know, charge up. A uh, son back here, a son right here. God damn, sons everywhere. A son here, a son there. Hey, we, we in the building. We in here. We up in this bitch, man. What's good? What's cracking, man? What's up? What's what? What it look like? 
<laughs> what it look like. We up in that bitch. We up here in Alaska, man. What it look like. What's cracking, man? We got 151 likes, man. I know you can get 50 more likes, man. So we can drop the link, man. Have some of these people come up here and get a get a piece of this, man. Everyone hit the like button, man. It's cracking in Alaska. What's good? We got nice gliders, man, to take care of us. These some real nice gliders, too, man. People, including help with housing and employment. But they also offer the basics to people who don't have a permanent home. Showers, being able to eat, you know, charge our phones, you know, do what we need to do to get ourselves together. They're, they're... A rotating list of 48 community partners work directly with clients. It's been described as a... God damn, we in the building, man. <laughs> <laughs> we up in this bitch, man. See, listen, man. This one thing, this one thing you gotta understand, man. When we come, man, you gotta take care of us, man. Press one. You gotta, you got, <laughs> you gotta have activities. You gotta have um, programs. You gotta have services. You got to have all that shit when we come. When we get there, man, you have to have that stuff. You have to have it. And everyone gets the benefit from that. Like, these gliders been up here suffering, man. Fishing and hunting for their food. <laughs> Yo, these gliders been up here fishing and hunting Living off the land, man. Sun's come. We get there, man. It's just like, all right, free shit, man. Free shit. Free shit, man. <laughs> man, they rolled out the red carpet when we get there, man. No more hunting, man. No more, <laughs> no more fishing, man. Fly fishing and shit. All day out there, all fucking day, fly fishing and shit. To catch one fucking fish and shit. We get there, man. It's crab legs. <laughs> crab legs and motherfucking shrimp. We good, man. But everybody, everybody get it. To, everybody get to enjoy it, though. That's the thing about it. Everybody gets to enjoy it, man. Um, showers, being able to eat, you know, charge our phones, you know, do what we need to do to get ourselves together. They, they're... A rotating list of 48 community partners work directly with clients. It's been described as a one-stop shopping experience. We've had a lot of success with someone will meet with partner A and then they'll need something from partner B and they can just go right into the next room and get that from the other partner. That's <laughs> yo. Yo. We, yo. Yo. Listen to what he's saying, man. Listen to what the, listen to what the glider said. Experience. We've had a lot of success with someone will meet with partner A and then they'll need something from partner B and they can just go right into the next room and get that from the other partner. <laughs> they, up here, they just like, yo, everybody, yo, what you need, man? Deodorant? All right, go here. All right, what you need? Toothbrush? All right, go there. You need a place to stay? All right, go over there. What you need? You need some socks? All right, go over there. Okay, what you need? You need some blood work done? Go over here. All right, man, what you need? You need... <laughs> You need a um a job? All right, go over there. What you need? You need to take some classes at the community center, at the community college? All right, go over there. What you need? Some crab legs? All right, crab legs. Go over there. What you need? <laughs> Shopping experience. 
we've had a lot of success with someone will meet with partner A and then they'll need something from partner B and they can just go right into the next room and get that from the other partner. That's kind of what happened with Andrew Ford, who's lived at the Brother Francis shelter for the last year. So I'm slowly getting my act together here physically. Mentally, I'm okay. <laughs> Ford says he came to the NAV Center with multiple needs, but got more assistance than he imagined from a friendly worker here. I told her, I said, I'll kiss your feet. <laughs> you know, you really helped me a whole heck of a lot with that. So I was happy to see these gliders. They, you don't have to say thank you. You don't have to kiss nobody's feet, man. Tell this glider you don't have to kiss nobody's feet, man. This is, you've been living up here in Alaska all this time, man, hunting and fishing. Yo, man, this is how it is, man. This is how sons live, man. We don't even say thank you, man. <laughs> we don't even say thank you, man. This glider, he, he, all, he don't even know, man. This, yeah, this is normal, man. <laughs> this is normal, glider. This is normal, man. This is normal. You don't have to be acting all like that, man. Oh, shocked and shit, man. They got to They supposed to do this. They got to do this, man. In fact, if somebody in here say something you don't like, you can whoop their ass. You can fuck the whole, you can tear the whole place up if you get mad. You could assault one of these people down here if they if, if your services ain't on time. If 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 you need something and it ain't there, man, you can assault one of these people, man. Yeah, punch this guy in the face, man. If you come down there and you and, and you need something and it ain't ready, or it's, or it's, they say you gotta wait an hour for it, man. Beat this glider's ass, man. This glider, but he don't know, man. They just they just getting this shit up there, man. They don't know, man. The other partner. That's kind of what happened with Andrew Ford, who's lived at the Brother Francis shelter for the last year. So I'm slowly getting my act together here physically. Mentally, I'm okay. <laughs> Ford says he came to the NAV Center with multiple needs, but got more assistance than he imagined from a friendly worker here. I told her, I said, I'll kiss your feet. <laughs> you know, you really helped me a whole heck of a lot with that. So I was happy to get that. That's one example for a place center leaders say is designed to help people take the next step in their lives. <laughs> man, thank these brothers, man. You need to go kiss these brothers' feet. You want to kiss some feet, man? You want to kiss some feet, bro? Kiss their feet, man. Press one. Kiss their feet, man. Press one. Because you wouldn't have that shit if they wasn't up there, man. <laughs> you wouldn't have this shit if they wasn't up there. Press one. You want to kiss some feet? Kiss their feet. Salute LRLRS. Yeah, man. You wouldn't have this shit. Fuck. Lives, whatever that looks like. That's one example for a place center leaders say is designed to help people take the next step in their lives, whatever that looks like for them. Lauren Max. Yeah, man, let me see how many likes we got, man. Oh man, y'all slipping. We got 168. We need 32 likes to, so I can drop the link. Yeah, damn. 32 likes, man. Let's get them. Let's get them, man. 32 more likes, man. 32 more likes, man. Salute to my man. Hey. I'm a through, man. Um, salute to you, man. Salute to my man Ryan, man. Ryan says, always a great show, man. You had me cracking up on that 
you need some crab legs. <laughs> okay, go over there. <laughs> Yeah, man. You know he like crab legs, man. Look at her. Look at that shade, man. No shade, man. My man got no shade, man. My man shaped like a bean bag and he's still saying it, man. <laughs> My man shaped like a bean bag. Straight sagging up in that place, man. God, dog. Hey, man. Alaska, man. Don't sleep on Alaska, man. We in the building. We making Alaska better, man. We in this bitch. Stop playing with us. Tonight, Alaska's news source begins a significant conversation about homelessness. Our goal is to seek solutions. Now, put that into context. An Anchorage Chamber survey says that two out of every three Anchorage businesses have had property damage because of the homeless crisis. One woman I met today who admitted throwing human waste at our building but says she was not worried about consequences, says homeless camping conditions are getting worse. A very strong warning. This story has video involving human feces, and it could be upsetting to watch. The trips to the front of Alaska's news source begin while the sun is still shining. Defeated, nobody, nobody. very frustrated. I feel embarrassed now, but... But it doesn't take long for huge black bags oh. full of human feces carted over in a Walmart grocery cart to be spread over almost every inch of the sidewalk. It's captured on video. Alaska's news source is near Cuddy Park, which is a homeless camp. I asked this woman, Angela Butcher, if she was the one who tossed the waste to the building because she looked like the woman in the video. Did you did you happen to do it? She told me she did it. And we saw Anchorage police drive past us while we talked. I guess it's like a protest in some way. It's not the right way, probably. She says she's not worried about being arrested. She built her crate house here after escaping a domestic violence situation. And then I thought, that's really gross and smelly and probably not a good idea. And then... Look at a white woman. She's going to cry after doing some nasty shit like that. Don't cry, bitch. You did some... That was disgusting. Don't try to cry your way out of this shit. You disgusting heathen, you. You savage. She's a savage, man. She's a... <laughs> you fucking savage. Oh. They got to burn that fucking building down now, man. You fucking savage, you. Try to cry. You going to start crying and shit. Talking about she did. Bitch, you nasty fucking bitch, you. Look at this fucking woman, man. Where the fuck did you get all this shit from, man? Who? How did she get all this shit? And then she spread it all over the front of the building. And then she, ew. You fucking savage. You're fucking dick. <laughs> You're the most you're the most disgusting person I've ever fucking met in my life, man. You you disgust me. Oh my god. She collected that shit. What's wrong with her, man? Every inch of the side. Yeah, I got super carrots in the last <laughs> Yo, this is this some this some next level carrying it, man. I don't know if the, I don't know, man. We need to keep them gliders up there, man. I don't know if we can handle this type of carrying in here. We be complaining. Some people be complaining if a, if if a if a if a Karen called a manager, man. Some people be complaining if a if a if a, if a Karen if a Karen um. To ask them, could they keep it down, man? <laughs> hey, man, can you keep it down? Some person lose their mind. Y'all ain't ready for these type of cars, man. <laughs> Shit, man. <laughs> they 
they are, oh shit, man, these some, these some Karen Karens, man. Fuck. Sidewalk, it's captured on video. Hey, I'm Rebecca Pollock with Alaska's News Source. Alaska's News Source is near Cuddy Park, which is a homeless camp. I asked this woman, Angela Butcher, if she was the one who tossed the waste to the building because she looked like the woman in the video. Did you, did you happen to do it? She told me she did it. And we saw Anchorage police drive past us while we talked. I guess it's like a protest in some way. It's not the right way, probably. She says she's not worried about being arrested. She built her crate house here after escaping a domestic violence situation. And then I thought, that's really gross and smelly and probably not a good idea. And then... I don't believe she was in no domestic violence situation. If she's doing shit like that, that dude had every right to whoop her ass. Press one, man. If she do a shit like this, imagine what she was doing to that dude, man. He probably was defending himself, man. I guess it's like a protest. She probably did. What's that girl um did to to um G uh Johnny Depp? What was that girl? Ann Hess, Ann Heard, whatever fuck her name is. What she do to Johnny Depp, man? She probably she probably did that to her fucking man. He came home, his bed was covered in shit. He fucking flipped out on her ass and whooped her ass. And she talking about she a victim of domestic violence. He ain't no victim of domestic violence. Drive past us while we talk. I guess it's like a protest in some ways. It's not the right way, probably. She says she's not worried about being arrested. She built her crate house here after escaping a domestic violence situation. And then I thought, that's really gross and smelly and probably not a good idea. And then... And then I tried to call and get a reporter, and they said, well, I guess they can't ignore this. Yeah. No tears. Not a fucking single solid. She can't even make herself cry. That you, what kind of Karen? Yo, these some, yo, this, these are some next level Karen. They can't even cry. They don't even have the tear gene. They got the, the, the black woman anti-tiered. <laughs> <laughs> Anti-tear duck gene. <laughs> These cameras made different in Alaska, man. They they can't even cry. The fuck? What is going on here in Alaska, man? Said, well, I guess they can't ignore this. Yeah. We could not. According to the Anchorage Chamber of Commerce, 67% of businesses in the city have had property damage during the homeless crisis. Oh out of 73% of the businesses dude. that responded to her survey. Oh, we got another dumpster for the other side. That'd be great. The city says it requested bathrooms, dumpsters, and hand washing stations for the large homeless camps at 40th and Denali, as well as 3rd and Ingra and Davis. Yeah. The number of facilities, the city says, at 3rd and Ingra has gone from four bathrooms to eight in the last week. The two here, Butcher says, are really gross, filled to the brim. Oh, no, children... you're not, bitch complaining. Bitch, I, she's complaining about something being gross. Yo, what the fuck? This bitch got the nerve to complain about something being gross. You, man, you gotta be, yo, these Karens in Alaska are next level. Are you kidding me? Yo, the audacity of this woman. Denali, as well as 3rd and Ingra and Davis. The number of facilities, the city says, at 3rd and Ingra has gone from four bathrooms to eight in the last week. The two here, Butcher says, are really gross, filled to the brim, and children have been using them. Why throw, like, feces at our door when we don't have didn't create the problem. Well, that's true, but you guys, it's really heavy, and you're the closest one, and I just, I mean, who's going to tell the story? Nobody else will. And we are waiting to hear from the Anchorage Police Department about how to follow this and how they will follow this. In general, it says businesses are left to clean up the mess themselves, and that, quote, an online report is sufficient. Parks and Rec says it would like to add more porta potties at the camps, but most of those, they say, are at the Alaska State Fair. Yo, she's, yo, that woman was disgusting. That woman was 
fucking disgusting, man. Yo, what the fuck, yo? In short, the recent federal ruling serves as a form of protection from being evaded or forced to relocate from a public space. The ruling emphasizes that when no indoor shelter space or housing is being offered, local governments cannot punish homeless people for living in public places or force them to leave. The interpretation of federal law for the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals covers the state of Alaska and several other western states. And with this recent decision, the court reaffirms that until the city is able to develop a strategy to move people from an unhoused position to shelter and housing, the city can't make people move from where they're living in public spaces. We already have several pieces of litigation involving attempted abatements in Anchorage, and this case is one of the cases we've been relying on in telling the court um, that this is why they shouldn't be able to do what they're doing. So we're um, really pleased to see that the court has continued to stay the course and reaffirm that that remains the law. An example of this in Anchorage is when the municipality recently gave notice that it planned to abate the homeless camp in Davis Park. However, after the American Civil Liberties Union of Alaska went to court to appeal the abatement, the city chose to call it off. The end game here isn't to have our public spaces, places where people are living. The end game is for the city to step up to the plate and make humane and civilized choices. That See, look, all this going to get better because some people is up there. You're going to get a whole lot of programs and services now that some people up there, man. Now that we here, man, it's shit going to get better for y'all, man. About to get a whole lot of free stuff. You ain't got to throw shit everywhere. You nasty fucking. That woman was disgusting, man. Talk about she a she's a victim of domestic violence. My ass, bitch. Closing arguments for a murder of a man in Mountain View Apartments were heard this morning. Trials for the murder of Soa Spina continue today. Two men, Robert Smith and Nikki Thompson, were on the run after that murder. Smith later pled guilty in Thompson. Yo, man, give me an idea on these people, man. Who are these? These fucking on burritos, man. They, they look like Eskimos to me. Eskimos? I'm Eskimos. <laughs> Sounds close. What the are these future, motherfuckers? The future is now. Oh Lord, shit! Natives you said that natives. Nah, you think so? What do you think? Yeah, they don't have big enough ears, man. Natives, they 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 look like these don't look like nesses. They don't look like native natives. They look like they, like, they, I mean, I don't know. They, they look, wh whatever they are, I mean, and I might be guessing, I don't think I am, but they definitely listen to NBA Youngboy and them. Mm, they look like natives. Okay, so people say they look like natives. They pray for tails, man. He's some pray for tails, man. <laughs> Salute to Johnny Reb. Johnny Reb on, on Rumble says, Sons ruin everything. Who thought putting the six flags in Atlanta was a good idea? We gonna get to that. Um, salute to Crook County, man. What's up, Crook County? Yo, what's the word? Uh, Yo, what do you think these dudes are? Um, Eskimos? Nah, they are. Fuck, man, that's a tough one. Um, what's that Samoan? And um and son, mm, it could be some more. Yeah. They look yeah, mixed. They look, they look mixed. This one too skinny to be a Samoa. He looked like a, a biracial <laughs> or some shit. He looked like he biracial, man. I agree, I know, man. Yeah, I like the Samoa because they did a lot of Samoans. When we did the other story on Alaska, they had they did say they had a lot of Samoans coming up there. Oh man. Alaska turned up, man. Sons making Alaska good though. They gonna have services. They gonna have. They gonna have bail reform and everything soon. These dudes gonna be good in a minute, man. Take the good with the bad, right? 
Yeah, man, these dudes, they, they probably got, they, 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 they committed their murder too early, man. They should have waited till sons got settled, man. They're, they're pioneers, man. Murder. Somebody got to get the ball rolling. Yeah, man. If they would have committed this murder in a couple of years, man, they got probation, man. Shit, man. If that. Robert Smith, closing arguments for a murder of a man in Mountain View Apartments Robert were heard this Smith. morning. Well, for the murder of Celestina, continue so today, cheap. two men, Robert Smith and Nikki Thompson, were yeah, up. come on. Yo, those come ain't on. native dames. Are those, those natives? Hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. And they're not on burrito names either, so you know. Nah, the devil ain't on burrito names. Roberto and hey, Roberto Salazar or some shit like that. Did Robert Smith? What the fuck? Hey, you know what? Jerry's in. I don't know, man. It's a tough one, man. Ah, damn. I gotta see this. Salute the man bear bull sharks. So far today, we've had sixty memberships gifted, man. That's big, man. Salute to all y'all gifting the channel membership. That's huge, man. Salute. Um, yeah. Salute to Natasha O'Neal. Hope you still got love for me. She, you better hope AP still got love for your ass. <laughs> hey, yeah, hey, cool, me, man. Man. hey, AP <laughs> gave cool. her a stern talking last night, man. <laughs> Hey, man. Oh, you all right with me. I ain't did hey, that to you. Hey, like hey, hey sister. Hey, sister. I ain't too down with the divestment, but uh, <laughs> we love you. Hey, man. She acting like I did something. I ain't do shit, man. Yo, that I, was AP, I, man. I think AP misunderstood her because I think Natasha understands. Yeah, hey, man. Nata oh, yeah. No, Natasha, she, 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 she got the message, man. <laughs> she was like, you she was like, yeah, DNA. DNA man. Hey, look, look, she got the message for sure. She got away, didn't she? Yeah, man. Shit, man. Shout out to AP, man. AP critical. Of Soa Spina continued today. Two men, Robert Smith and Nikki Thompson, were on the run after that murder. Smith later pled guilty, and Thompson is facing murder charges in this trial. Now, in the closing arguments, the defense claims that there is not sufficient evidence to show that Thompson acted with Smith in the killing of Finu. While the prosecution oh, argues that the testimonies that Thompson provided are inconsistent with evidence and testimonials of the other witnesses. That is inconsistent with Mickey Thompson's testimony about his state of mind there. And if you are looking at self-defense, if you are considering self-defense in this and giving it serious consideration, then if, which you're really only doing if you believe that Sasaya Fanau was reaching for a firearm. But you have. What is that, man? Is that Alexander Barry right there? What's <laughs> Yo, what's what do you think? What do you think he is, uh, Alexander? What's, the, what's so funny about the Robert Smith name? Is this guy uh Eskimo? Is he a Samoan? Is he a sign man? What is he? I, I, know, a white, I know a white kid called Leroy half a century ago. <laughs> I think I think he said sign man, right? That's what I yeah. understand. Right? I'm going with I'm going with uh Sun Glider for sure with this one. Yeah, I'm going Sun Glider. That lady right there, that could be his half sister. Mm. I can get yeah, he has bad. problematism. Yeah, he doesn't have the um the, where the face comes down like this. No, nope. he has it where it comes out. Yeah, that's a sun yeah. glider. But the other one, he gotta be some type of Samoan with sun. Mm. Finale was reaching for a firearm, but you have to consider Ricky Thompson's state of mind. The government has not shown with evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that Mr. Thompson caused the death of Mr. Fanu. And the government has not shown with evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that Mr. S Thompson is responsible for the conduct of Mr. Smith. And we will keep you up to speed on the trial as it continues. You can also go to alaskanewsource.com for live. I'm going not guilty, man. <laughs> I'm going not fucking.